society imposes uh, in some way that kind of American dream on a lot of people. Right. And, uh, and they just kind of go with it and realize 20 years later that, uh, oh shit, like, I, I mean, this is a, I really wish I was doing something else. This is about humans dreaming together. About humans supporting each other on our journeys. It's about the science and the art behind making our dream lives a reality. To the students of life. The young and the curious. The dreamers and the doers. To those who crave to be a strong individual. And want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the Dreamology Podcast. What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a great day. This is your host, Tim Bishop. Welcome back to the Dreamology Podcast, where we are bringing together the dream chasers and entrepreneurs and big thinkers of the future generations. And we are trying to figure out what truly is the modern day American dream. How do we make it happen? And what tools, mindsets, and skills do we need to get us there? And so that's why we're here. That's what we're up to. And I am pumped that you decided to come listen to this episode today with this fire guest, Jordan Paris, 22-year-old entrepreneur, the host of Growth Mindset University which has pretty frequently ranked in the top 20 podcasts in the educational category in the world. Very impressive. He is a author and he is the founder of Trend Up Media, a podcasting company for people looking to scale and produce a podcast. Very impressive dude for being only 22 years old. And on this episode, we talk a lot about his story education and the current system that is failing kids, mental health and mindset and entrepreneurship tips for young dream chasers like you and me. You're not going to want to miss this episode. Stick around for the whole thing. I will talk to you at the end. Without further ado, here is Jordan Paris. All right, everyone, we got a special guest. Jordan Paris, another young entrepreneur out there, 22 years old. He's a, an author. Uh, he owns a few businesses. He's the, the creator of the podcast Growth Mindset University. And uh, he's so much more than that. He's a good dude and he's living his life. And uh, Jordan, I'm, I'm pumped that you're here, man. Uh, how are you doing today? Doing real well. Thanks, Tim, for taking uh, an, enough of an interest in me to interview me. I'm grateful to be here with you and connecting with you today. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Well, before we dive in, I just want to ask real quick, because it's been a crazy year, man, how you've been holding up and just uh, <laughs> the transitions and the, you know, the, the, yeah. the, just the new cycle, the COVID. I mean, how you've been holding up during all this stuff, man? I mean, look, it's been the best year of my life. I, I, I saw very clearly in, in the, when this was all happening, like this is an incredible opportunity for me. I mean, I was always, I, I had a business already established. I was in the online space mm. already when it was March. And, you know, I kind of, I saw this opportunity because, uh, you know, I produce podcasts with my business. Mm -hmm. uh, very, you know, a little, almost a little bit like yourself. You know, you, you produce videos, you make videos uh, with your company. I produce podcasts. Mm. It's called Trend Up Media is the company. Trend Up Media is the website. So the .com is dot .media. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of saw like, you know, with this great shift online, like people are, are wanting to find ways to make money online and, and generate mm. leads online. And, uh, and, and I, I, you know, I just know how to do that with podcasts. So I was like, mm. I can get more clients than ever in this time period. And, mm -hmm. and since, I mean, look, before March, I wasn't, look, I really wasn't doing that well, Tim. I, I really wasn't. But mm -hmm. since March, I mean, I've just been, you know, we're, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Trend, you know, trending so, up, right? Trending yeah, up. Re really, <laughs> right, right. And so it's, uh, I, I think it's all about um, mindset. You know, look, I, I guess, I guess uh, right place, right time too. Right. With right. me and with the business I already had going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I could have, I mean, look, I had someone who, uh, a friend of mine who told me, you know, with my business, Jordan, nobody's buying right now. I remember that in March mm. and I was like, I disagree. I, 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 you know, I don't have any proof for you yet, but I, I, I think you're wrong. I didn't say that to him. I don't really tell people they're wrong. Mm. Um, 
And uh, so he, he had the wrong mindset and, and he's right. still unemployed and uh, I had the right mindset and I'm doing better than ever. So, yeah, it's interesting, man. I mean, it's fascinating to hear people's different stories about how either this totally changed their plans and they didn't, they weren't really pandemic ready in a sense, but a lot of people, there's, there's really interesting opportunities that are emerging that actually could strengthen their businesses in the future when all of a sudden yeah. the world comes back and now they have this whole new online presence and this whole new offline presence. So, so man, I'm happy to hear that things for you are going well and that you saw some growth and that, uh, you know, you, you're, you're, you're rocking and rolling during this whole time. So that makes Thanks. me happy, man. Um, yeah. It, look, it's different. You know, like I said, right place, right time. You know, if you're a restaurant owner, uh, obviously that sucks. Uh, if you have pretty much any physical business, I mean that, that sucks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to say the same if I had a, a, a you know a physical presence. Uh, if I had a brick and mortar business, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Uh, cool, man. Well, let's let's jump back. I want to kind of you know I know that we're about the same age in our life. You know, you're 22, I'm 23. I'm curious how you know your backstory, personal wise. Like, how did you even get into personal development? How did mm -hmm. you start to be interested in this stuff? You know, what were those struggles you went through early on um, with with the stuff you were going through? And I'm just curious to kind of that backstory. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, very much like yourself coming back from, you know, you coming back from Asia and kind of realize and going into your senior year, like, oh, I really don't want a, a job in, in <laughs> corporate America. And uh, just kind of realizing that and making things happen, building in a new direction. Uh, you know, I remember when I was, I had, a, had this job when I was 16, I was uh, mm -hmm. working at a restaurant and got promoted to a server and I was a very good employee, did things I wasn't even asked to do, like clean piss up off the floors in the bathrooms and clean the drains. And, I've been there, man. I was a server yeah. too. I've been there. <laughs> Hard, hardest, one of the hardest, I think, I think it's the hardest job out there. One of the most stressful jobs out there really is tough. And, uh, and it was tough. I was a good employer. I didn't really get yelled at that much. I mean, it happened. It, it does happen. Uh, but, uh, I was, I was good. And, you know, but I got out of there at 18 and a half. I said, never again, I'm not going to work for anyone ever again. And, mm. uh, so I started building in a, a new direction, uh, one that was going to make me uh, a lot happier instead of going with the flow of what society or parents or grandparents say I should do. Mm. I started going with my flow. You know, I still, you know, one could say, I, I used to say dead fish go with only dead fish go with the flow. Uh, only dead fish go with society's flow. Yes. But I look, I, I just go, I go with my flu. I do flow. I do what I feel. Mm. Um, and I don't really have too much structure to my days. I just kind of like do, I, I go with it. I really do. I go with my flow. Uh, mm -hmm. I do what I want really. Um, but you know, back then I, I started, I, I thought I wanted to be a personal trainer got that certification and sort of training in home clients. And then realized I was, I, I didn't, I, it was while, while it was a better direction, I was 19 years old making $60 per hour. It was great. Everyone else was making 10 my age. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. While it was a better direction for me, for me, than having some sort of corporate job that was better than those prospects, it wasn't, I realized about a year and it wasn't the best direction because I was going to be tied to a location. I started when I, I would go away for a weekend and I'd be like, oh, well, that's X amount of dollars that I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be able to right. train these people and I'm going to miss those sessions. And you just... I'm like, I'd rather stay and, and make that money. And so I started realizing that I uh, needed to decelerate and, and ramp down and, and uh, started building in another direction, one that does not tie me to any location at all. I have the only thing that ties me to a location, Tim, is the car that I bought. That's, that's it. I mean, I, other, and, and, and I don't even care. Like, I haven't seen that car in three, in two months, <laughs> I've been trapped. I've been, I've been all over for two months. I haven't seen that car in two months and I don't even, I don't even care. Uh, so I really, I really don't have anything tying me to a location. I don't have to like show up at some office. Hmm. I don't have to show up at somebody's house and train them. And, uh, and, and so like, that's for me, that is success for me. Freedom equals success for me. Hmm. Hmm. And that's, cool, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And so on the, uh, so did you go to college or no? I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And down Just to Florida? Just a formality. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, okay, cool. So was there any, you know, I'm just curious, like, was there any moments of like on the personal side of things 
like a, a moment where a really big thing switched or, you know, there was a hardship that you went mm -hmm. through that really accelerated like your own internal growth, your own internal, yeah. like besides the career wise that said, you know what, I'm not feeling really good with this. And I'm just curious on, on that story. Cause I feel like a lot of young people kind of go through something like that or are going through that right now, you know? Yeah. Look, and uncle Brian, who, uh, who happens to be somewhere within a, a hundred foot radius right now <laughs> of me, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, you know, towards the end of high school, introduced me some, to some books, uh, how to win friends and influence people awaken the giant within mm. Tony Robbins, uh, and the mastery of love. And so mm. th those were, that's like, the foundation of my foundation. Hmm. And that, like, that was the first time I really started. I actually read for pleasure. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe I did it when I was six, I don't know. Um, hmm. But that was, that was the first time I started doing that. And that definitely changed a lot of things for me and made me reconsider things. And then uh, again, uh, uncle Brian, and um, I remember my freshman year of, of college being on the phone with him. And I'm like thinking about, switching from like accounting to finance or finance to accounting. I can't remember which one. And he's like, why don't you just take general business? It'll be so much easier and you can have so much more time to learn about things that are actually <laughs> worth learning about that are actually going to help you like focus on like all on personal development and take general business. And like, you're not even going to have to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, you know, I ended up in entrepreneur. I, 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 I decelerated. I went down to marketing. That's a, a lot easier than those finance and accounting. And then I got, made it even easier for myself, the absolute path of least resistance at FGCU is entrepreneurship and yeah. <laughs> just an absolute breeze. And it was, yeah, it was so easy. And uh, I, I, I focused no time on school, none. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, all the while I focused on learning as much as I could serving customers serving mm. clients serving mm. uh people and making things and putting them out there and and uh yeah yeah interesting so like when you look at i'm just curious to dive into this like when you look at just kind of the education system right now and obviously there's a lot of you know i think like 40 percent of gen z want to be entrepreneurs like it's a very big number um and you look at just how a lot of people are kind of having the same realizations as you you know, what would you like knowing what you know now, go back and tell that freshman or sophomore in college, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, what would you go back and kind yeah. of be like, Hey man, this is, this is kind of what's wrong with it. And, and yeah. here's how, here's some pieces of advice I would give you. Yeah. I mean, I would just ask people to consider what the higher purpose beyond getting the striving for the A is. It, there, there's, you know, if you're going to, if you want to save lives and you want to be a doctor and uh, you need to get into med school, then yeah, go get that A because it's going to get you into med school. If you want to fight for innocent people on death row, you know, be a lawyer, then yeah, go get that A. It'll get you into law school. See, the A in those scenarios is not the end, but it can be a means to an end. If you'd like to be an entrepreneur, on the other hand, then study less, socialize more. And like I said, focus on serving clients and putting stuff out there, making a thing, doing a thing and, and uh, putting it out there in the market and seeing how people react and trial and error and, and iterating and improving. Uh, because look, the quest for an A is absolutely meaningless without a purpose, without a purpose beyond getting that A. And I think a lot of people are caught up, Tim, in just getting the A because uh, that's uh, what you're supposed to do or what mm. they think they're supposed to do. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. They don't really know why they're just doing it just to do it. And, uh, they, they I, I mean, begin with the end in mind. I mean, what do you want to, what do you want to do? Like, and, and begin with the end in mind and reverse engineer it from there. What needs to, you know, st like start with that big thing and, and then like, okay, what are the three, four five big things I need to focus on to make that thing happen? And a lot of times, unless it's doctor, lawyer, engineer, getting an A is not one of those big moves. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. And I love that take. Cause I always, I always cringe a little bit when I hear hot takes like GPA doesn't matter or GPA is the only thing that matters because everything is so relative towards 
you know, what path you're choosing to take. And I also have that very purpose driven yeah. mindset where it's like, uh, yeah. you know, if you're going to do something like that is very specific and specialized, then yes, like that is it. But it's important to step back and just understand your role in all of it and where you really want to go. Because if you're just like this, but like you're not actually heading in one of those directions, you know, what I found for me is like, I was that kid. Like I was the 4.0 student. I was the kid who like almost mm -hmm. went into investment banking mm -hmm. and I had my sites that was just like this, like this was my site. It was literally here, bro. Yeah, and then narrow. once yeah. I knocked those walls down, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like I haven't been seeing 99% of the world. And so it's such a powerful lesson to tell young kids, even our age is just like, dude, take the blinders off and look Definitely. around and ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, Tim, I mean, to your point, I used to, I used to, my, my take, well, it used to be the hot take of GPA doesn't matter uh, at mm. all. Uh, mm. Now people would, would comment like, Oh, doctor, lawyer, engineer, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't <laughs> want my, my doctor to study on YouTube. No shit, Sherlock. Like <laughs> we know uh, so it, it, it hasn't really been a change in my beliefs. It's just been a change in the way I say it. I mean, we, we, right. we all understand yeah. that, that part. We get it, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of change the way I say it because yeah. it, it is, it is nuanced. Right. Right. And, and just like every, like every statement in the world could have a, well, what about this? Right. That's just kind of life. Right. Like there's multiple perspectives. And so yeah. no, I, I totally get where you're at, man. Um, uh, just for fun, you know, I'm curious if, if I feel like, you know, I just got a growth mindset, we'll get into the whole growth mindset university and stuff, but just for fun, cause I haven't riffed with another, you know, kind of guy right now, my age is like, you know, if you think about a few changes that you would like to see and how the education system pushes people mm -hmm. through, what do you think, you know, just off the top of your head, what are some things that you've been thinking about? Cause I feel like you've got some thoughts about this. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I, if I had the if I had some really great solution, I, I'd probably be a billionaire. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, projects, homework, doing in class, lectures at home. And, and like, you don't need to have, it's so weird to have one professor give the same lecture on Monday, and Wednesday and Friday, class after class after class. He, you don't have to say it again after you say it once. Like it should be out there. And number one, he shouldn't be the guy teaching it. There, like there should be a world class practitioner in that field giving a world class lecture that everyone, that most colleges around the country in that class can tune into and watch at home. And then like, mm. like, like, like master class. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, like world-class practitioners in their field, teaching things that actually matter, people watching it at home. And then, and then yes, there, there should be a professor or at least a facilitator mm. in the class. And you should actually be like doing things in there, collaborating, working with people. And uh, yeah, I, I think that that's one fundamental shift that, that should happen. I would, I would reconsider too the way tests are, are done. Uh, so yeah. as to not incentivize people to, I mean, I would consider abolishing tests. I know Seth Godin and I talked about this recently. He wants to, I mean, he, he, he's not a fan of tests. He thinks people should get rid of them. Mm. Uh, and he can explain it better than I can, but you know, the question that comes up in every class, Tim, you've heard it is, will this be on the test? That means yeah. that translates to, I'm not here for the learning. I'm just here for the grade and for the piece of paper. Right. And, and what are they going to do? They're going to cram and memorize and forget uh, a day later. Right. Like that's, it's just not, it's, it's not real learning. Yeah. So I would totally reconsider testing mm. too. Uh, those, so yeah, those are a couple of ideas. I would, completely get rid of goddamn mcgraw hill and <laughs> and, and yes bro <laughs> if, you're, if you're older you might not get this whoever's right. older that's name but yes yeah anyone anyone our age is laughing <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. mcgraw hill sengage the 
BS, man, that, that you just click through, click through, and anyone just clicks through. If the system can be gamed, especially the way the McGraw-Hill system can be gamed, it will be gamed. Right. And I don't, I don't know anyone who like doesn't just click through that BS. Yeah. And, and like nobody pays attention to it. Like there's not actual learn. It's just a, a colossal waste of time and energy and uh and mcgraw hill is really profiting off it and i really don't like that company yeah <laughs> i really yeah. yeah i'm not a fan of those people i get rid of them dude well you know what i've been thinking about recently too which is i mean you touched on the collaboration aspect is that 99 percent of our education we're being graded on how we can do on our own studying one topic when you get into the world it's 100% about how can you collaborate together and bring together these different things as a team and move forward. And so here you have kids, you know, think about this, like your whole life, right, from age five to 21, if you choose to go through the whole, the whole system, you are being graded based off of your peers around mm -hmm. you. And, you know, if you know I don't know much about happiness and psychology, like our happiness is relative, right? Like our happiness is we look at people around us, we judge how we're doing. So maybe you're an A and a B student. Okay, you're doing pretty well. Now you're moving up, moving up, moving up. And you go through this whole system. You're like, I feel pretty good about myself. Like I yeah. graduated from, you know, University of Wisconsin-Madison. I was an A student. Like I'm mm -hmm. feeling good. And now I go into the world, right? And I'm at the bottom, the bottom of the totem yeah, yeah. pole because now I'm comparing myself to everybody and then everyone's like, so why are you so arrogant? Why do you want so many things? Well, it's like, well, my whole life, relatively, I've been on the top. And that's how you've taught me. That's how you've trained me. And so now I'm here and I'm at the bottom and it feels weird. And now you're getting mad at me for feeling weird. And it right. feels all backwards. Like, so it's just like what I've been thinking about is just that collaboration aspect, but also like, how do you get out of like, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that we're all training like five-year-olds together. Like if I'm a five-year-old, I should be having a mentor who's 30 and I should be interacting with this person. And I should be like more of a mentor based education system where you're actually interacting with people who are out of the system. So you can get a more real yeah. grasp on like yeah. what's happening in the world. So that's what I've been thinking about. Yeah, definitely. And, and I mean, regarding collaboration and, and working with other people, I would have an entire like prereq class on groupthink. Mm. Okay. Mm. And, and groupthink for people who don't know, I'll read it right here. Groupthink is a psychological phenomenon that occurs within a group of people in which the desire for harmony or conformity in the group results in an irrational or dysfunctional decision-making outcome. So, you know, we've all experienced this working in, in groups in college where, you know, people, someone throws out an idea and everyone's like, Oh yeah, yeah, fine. And, but, but, you know, I'm sitting there thinking it's not effing fine. Like, like that, <laughs> that idea sucks, but I'm not going to say anything about it. Like, Right. <laughs> you know, so, so I would just have a whole course on group think. Mm. Dude, <laughs> so the, I mean, yeah, right. Well, let's get into growth mindset university. Mm. I feel like you're touching on this here and I'm curious how that idea came to play because, you know, this is the stuff we kind of need to be learning. And so I'm interested how, you know, what, what, you know, you're running an incredible podcast. How did the Thanks. idea um, come to be? And then I'm curious about, you know, the evolution of that and how it's evolved now over the years. Yeah, look, I don't really know where it, came from i, I kind of remember thinking uh it was the end of 2017 it was december it was like winter break and i remember being home in my room for winter break uh and i thought about growth mindset university like i thought about the name i don't know where it came from and i didn't really do anything with it i didn't write it down but when it came time in march to uh I was, I wanted to put together this little mini course, stupid little thing. And it was just like, a, it was just like a curation of, of YouTube videos from like Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins, stuff like that. Stupid. Uh, but I called it growth mindset university. And then a week later I started, I don't, I, mean, I don't even know why either, but I started writing a, a, a book and I was like, Oh, I'll call it growth mindset university. And then a month later, uh, we're at April 17th now of 18, it's like, oh, I'll start a podcast. Don't know why, uh, but I just said, uh, I'll call it Growth Mindset University. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so that's what it was. And it really just, uh, it just evolved very natural, organically. And, mm. uh, and, and uh, yeah, 
uh, I didn't take it very seriously at first and mm. it wasn't very good. And uh, I think I started hitting my stride in early 2019 though, really. Mm. And I don't know, Tim, where, because Growth Mindset University is all about learning the lessons we should have learned in school, but didn't everyone who listens to the show knows that. I don't know exactly when that came in because I, I'm certain that it was, that was not the overarching purpose of the show mm. when it first started. It, it was not. So I don't know when that came in some, some late 2018 or early, early, early 2019, probably late 2018, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, mm. But it, but you get the point. It's really evolved right. uh, very organically. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's, and so from there, like once it, you kind of feel like once you had a good grasp on kind of that mission and purpose a bit more, is that when you felt like you started to see some like pretty big acceleration or what was, yeah. Was there, was there kind of a turning point there? Definitely. Uh, I mean, it was like a good little storm of, of just becoming much more intentional about it, being much more clear hmm. and uh, starting to be a little bit more bold in who I was reaching out to right. instead of waiting for some day that would never come to pass where it would be the perfect time for me to reach out to this person, that person that started doing it. Mm. And uh, some people take chances on you. They reach back, you know, people mm. that are above you, they'll reach back. Right. And uh, some of them will. And so people took chances and, and uh, you started using LinkedIn and uh, mm -hmm. like I said, perfect little storm. Yeah. I love it, man. And, you know, I feel like that's a great lesson. Um, you know, I feel like so many people are either graduating or going into entrepreneurship and they want to have everything figured out. They want to have it all, you know, perfectly lined up. But the reality is, I mean, at least for me, and it sounds like for you was, okay, I know I want to get into this world and I know I have a bunch of ideas and passions and whatever, but like, I, I got to get in the trenches before I really figure this out. I got to like, just start going because yeah. I'm never going to just like sit there and figure out like, Oh no, I don't like that because you just, you got, you got no clue. Yeah. Until you get yourself in the ring and start taking a few swings. Right. Yeah. Do th I mean, uh, regarding college, um, I mean, do things. I mean, it's like, try things, get involved. I mean, I got on campus and not to like toot my own horn, but I got on campus and I just started doing, doing, doing complete flip from high school. I didn't do anything in high school, mm. college, first week fraternity, uh, running for president of my residence hall. I won. I got elected because I busted my ass with the marketing. And third, I uh, became a student athlete out of nowhere. Uh, I was a cheerleader. I was doing backflips like a week later. So I, <laughs> and I never done that in my life. So, and, and, and those experiences were so rich and mm. so critical uh, in, 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 in my journey mm. uh, to eventually, you know, being who I am today and who I will continue to become. And, 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 folk, and, and just like, like when you have an idea, like really start to do it. I mean, if grades don't matter that much to you and if they're not going to be like uh, absolutely critical for you to get to the next level in your career, then, mm -hmm. then really, really start like find ways to serve, serve people and put something out there and see how people react. And, mm -hmm. and maybe just maybe by the time you graduate college, you won't need to get a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give yourself love, options. Yeah, right. I love how you always say find ways to serve people because, you know, that's going back to just some things that we, I think are missing in the education system is like, it's so focused on the what it's so focused on like, you're going to study finance or marketing, you're gonna do this or that. But if you flip your mindset to like, how can I serve? What problems do I care about? What, what, what things in my day-to-day -day life people say like, oh man, I love your energy. I love your compassion. Yeah, yeah. I love, and you yeah. figure out, okay, how can I mash these these things that I'm kind of good at with like problems I see. And then how can I serve? Like, that's the end goal. That's what we all want to do. Everyone says, I just mm -hmm. want to help people. Right. And so it's like, we have to start thinking like that. Right. And that's why I love how you, I just wanted to point out, I love how you emphasize the Thanks. service mindset. Thanks. It's very, it's very cool. And so now I'm curious, you know, after you've been, it's how you make money too. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing too. The bigger problems you solve, the I, more money you make. We got to incorporate more classes. I put a bow on it on education, more classes, that focus on the ROI of your education, like return on investment, you know, how, mm. things that are at, classes that are actually going to make you a lot of money. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, there's a whole, there's a whole world there. And I wonder what's going on behind the scenes, but um, I'm curious about, 
you know, now you've been running this podcast for multiple years. You read a, wrote a book, actually two books, right? You wrote a podcasting playbook book too. Um, that's awesome, man. Cheers to you. Congrats. Um, so now as it's evolved, I'm curious how you would just define what a growth mindset means to you. Mm -hmm. Cause I assume you would consider yourself to have a growth mindset and everyone's always kind of interested in how other people think. And so I'm curious how you would define, you know, your own growth mindset for the listeners in the world. Yeah. I mean, like obviously it's not an original thing. It's, you know, it was, it was uh, established by Carol Dweck in maybe 2006 and mm -hmm. she defines it. I'm going to butcher it a little bit cause I don't have it memorized word for word, but anything can be learned with anyone can learn anything with effort. Right. So, I mean, but for me, it's, it's just that learning is a way of life. I'm, you know, I wake up and I do some reading. Uh, I listen to audiobooks while I, maybe while I work out or shower, uh, while I cook. Uh, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm constantly learning and I'm, and I'm also constantly doing too, mm. you know, what are we doing when we're, and we're reading these books, listening to these books, I mean, we're looking for inspiration and, and actually the root of the word inspiration goes, you know, the Latin root is inspirare. That's the word. And in it actually means to breathe in. That's what it means. Mm. And so if we're, we can't be constantly breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, we have to actually breathe out. And so we have to expirare, expire. <laughs> we have to expire. We have to breathe out mm. and actually do things. And uh, yeah. instead of, I mean, a lot of people have to consider is, is your consumption of self-help and business books becoming masturbatory? Is your life and income not going up, but you keep reading and learning more? You know, I, I used to read 100 pages in a sitting. I used to, I used to read way more. Um, 10 pages was the minimum I would read in a morning. Now really 10 pages is the maximum I'll read in the morning. I got things to do. I got money to make. I got that, right. I got to do, I, I got to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reading less. I'm not, not reading it. I'm not, not reading at all, mm. but I'm reading less than I have in years, but my results have been better than ever. Mm. There was a point where my consumption was masturbatory. Hmm. Yeah. It's finding that balance. Right. I mean, I feel like Gary V talks about that a lot with his audience where it's like people follow him just to get that, that jolt every day, but they don't actually really do anything with it. They don't actually follow through with it. Uh. <laughs> I love the, I love the, the learn experience teach sort of model, like learn something, go experience it. And then at that point, you know, you have it for yourself and someone asks you about it, you can actually talk about it because you've actually done it. Right. Like mm -hmm. I kind of like that. I've heard that before, just yeah. those, those, that evolution, because if you're just learning, like if I read a hundred yeah. books on meditation and mindset or whatever, and I never actually did it, you know, you really can't speak on it or you don't really, yeah. under, you don't, you don't even understand it. Honestly, you don't even understand it. Even if you've read it a million times until you actually do it, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of fool's gold, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, and, and the implementation varies by, by, by the book too. I mean, if you're going to, mm. you know, if someone were to ask me like, Oh, what does do the doing look like? I mean, there's millions of books out there and it's, and it's different for each book. I mean, mm. captivate the science of succeeding with people by Vanessa Van Edwards, for example, you take one concept from the book, take, take, she talks about skill solicitation in there. And, and I'll give you an, a, a really basic, stupid example. You know, I asked you, Tim, I'm like, Tim, would you, would you consider yourself to be uh, strong? Like, you work out, right? Yeah. And, and then I'm like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. And I'm like, uh, can you help me lift this over here? You know, so you're, so you're, so I'm like, you're not going to say no after, after you're like, oh yeah, I'm a strong man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> cave, you know? Cave, cave men, cave man yeah. mind. Yeah. So, uh, that's a very basic example of skill solicitation, but you can read more about it in mm. the science of sitting with people. And it's just, it's just little, little things like that, you know, taking action on those things. Mm, yeah. You're the devil dog bark. Yeah. Yeah. We got a, we got a fan out there. Hello dog. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Um, so I'm interested, like, is there any, you know, through your, your years of your learning, um, you know, is there any, really any sort of 
just mindset habits that you put in place, whether it's journaling or meditation or, you know, I mean, everyone's got their own thing, you know, but I like to learn what people's thing are. So I'm curious if there's any sort of thing you do to sort of keep that yeah. mindset fresh and, 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 and yeah. alive and strong. Yeah, it's, it's no phone first thing in the morning. I do a few things before I do that. It's not always all three of these things, but it mm -hmm. is, um, or not, I, not, I shouldn't say three, but it's not usually all of these things. Uh, sometimes it's a mixture of them. Uh, sometimes it is all of them. Uh, it's before I go to my phone, I will read, I will meditate for five minutes and I will do some breathing work during the meditation. Also during the meditation, I will think of three things I'm grateful for. There's actually science behind that. I can talk about that if you want. I've, ta I've talked about it before. Yeah. They've probably heard it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to think it was cheesy for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, but, well, you but know, run it, past run it back, man. Give us the science. Yeah. I mean, again. there's different, I mean, I, you may have talked about something different, but in uh, Dr. Cialdini's book, Persuasion. great book. He talks about uh, the research of, uh, of one of his colleagues, a professor at UCLA, a researcher there uh, named Dr. Sonia Lubomirsky. And mm -hmm. she, she studies happiness, mm -hmm. studies the science of happiness. And so she, Dr. Cialdini asked Dr. Lubomirsky what she could say with scientific confidence about happiness. And she said that this reliably increases happiness in people. And it is thinking of and writing down three things that you're grateful for and sitting with them on a daily basis. Mm. That reliable, she said with scientific confidence that that reliably increases happiness. This is a, a professor at UCLA that studies happiness. And so, you know, what was the research behind that? What was the experience behind that? I don't know. I just took her for her word, yeah. uh, you know, but, uh, but there we go. Another example. And so, you know, back to like, you know, what I'm, I mean, what I'm doing, you know, some of my habits, like before, you know, before I get to the phone, I'm doing the reading, I'm doing the, 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 the cheesy thing, right. <laughs> That's not so cheesy. <laughs> right. Uh, and the, the, during the meditation, um, and sometimes I exercise, sometimes I do a little, sometimes I do a full workout. That's less common, but, uh, most of the times I'll just do abs in the morning uh, for five minutes. And, and, uh, also during my meditation, I'll think of, I'll ask myself these three questions. What am I, what can I be excited about today? What could go wrong today? And how would my best self respond? Hmm. And then who can I surprise today? Who can I give to today? So that's my framework called hmm. prime, prepare, provide. Obviously with the first question, what can I be excited about today? You're priming yourself to be excited about the day. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a good thing to prime yourself for right in the beginning of the day. Prepare. You know, I mean, look, shit happens. Uh, right. what, could, what could go wrong today? And, and, and thinking about how you're going to visualize and how you're going to respond to that, I think is really, really helpful. Hmm. And then uh, provide, I mean, it's good to serve people. It's good to, good right. to give. It feels good. And, uh, and uh, so, so that's yeah. the, 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 the purpose of the third question. Who can I give to today? So yeah, I even if it's that. just a little thing, it. like, uh, like, I don't know, but whatever. No. Yeah. I, lo I love it, man. I absolutely love it. I, I remember I just found out actually last year I was talking to my grandma on the phone and I had no clue, but every morning for like 20 years, she's gone and she sat down and she said, she's very religious. She said, God, how can I serve someone today? And I don't know why, but that hit me so hard. I was like, really every morning mm -hmm. for 20 years, you've sat down and just asked the question, how can I serve someone? How amazing is that? I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. like nobody does that, right? You don't, you don't sit down and think about that or a very, you know, small percent of the population. And I was just like, man, if I could take that with me wherever I go and ask that question in the morning. And, and so I love that, man. I also love the prepare element of what you said. Um, have you heard of the whoop method? Have you heard, studied that before no. at all? Okay. Similar to what you said, but it's, it was, uh, I forget, I forget her book, but basically it stands for wish, uh, outcome, obstacle, plan. And so it was kind of like the antidote to Norman Vincent Peale's like positive yeah. thinking, which uh. was like, 
this is oh. great. This, this, you know, mm. affirmation and this, like, I want this outcome, but mm. what happens, you know, what happens, Jordan, if I go out in the world and I say today, I'm going to meet a beautiful girl and I'm going to walk up to her and I'm going to be confident and I see her and I freeze. What do I do then? Ah, that's good. What, that's good. That's good. What is next? And so in the example, I need to think about that one more often. <laughs> it's great, right? It's great. The example they gave was Michael Phelps. He had been, do, his coach had told him to do positive visualization, visualization, right? Obviously, like imagine yourself winning gold. Imagine yourself winning gold. Well, he actually didn't tell his coach, but he got so sick of that. Now, instead, what he decided to do is he was decided to imagine every possible thing that could possibly go wrong, and he created a mental plan for it. And so what happens? 2008 Olympics in Beijing, Phelps jumps in the pool, and after 10 seconds, his goggles flood up, and he can't see a thing. Oh, no. <laughs> but he, he already for planned for it. <laughs> he knew the exact amount of strokes on average that he took to get there and back. And so without being able to see a thing, Phelps goes down and back in the butterfly and he wins the gold medal and sets an Olympic record and he pops up and you can see his face. He's pissed. He's like, and he's like, Oh, I just broke an Olympic world record. Amazing. And so the power Amazing. of preparing, like you said, is like, what could go wrong? You obviously can't prepare for everything, but a lot of stuff. Amazing goes, example. Goes man. Is here. But yeah, I wanted to share that. Cause I thought you would like that. And that's really could, helpful. I could add something. So I, I think love, it's going to anchor it. it in for a lot of people and, and, and that, that, uh, that really helps. That uh, helps me too. I'm going to remember that. Yeah, dude. I love it. Um, sweet dude. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, diving into the entrepreneurial conversation a bit, you know, obviously a lot of young entrepreneurs right now are, are wanting to chase something, wanting to try something. And I'm sure you found some success. And so there's people out there are probably thinking, how do I get, you know, how can I be 22 like Jordan Paris of the podcast and, uh, and you know, the company and, and this kind of stuff, this and that, right. And, or this many followers, right. What would you just tell, you know, a couple lessons to some people who are kind of say, you know, I want to find, you know, that sort of success at a young age. I want to do these different things. You know, what are some things that you feel like you've learned through your kind of entrepreneurial journey that you would pass down to people who are about to go on the same, you know, course, maybe they're 18, 19, 20 years old, even my age, even our age, you know, 22, 23, they're just starting, you know, what are some lessons that you feel like you could impart on those people? That's tough to say, man. It really is. Um, you know, cause there's obviously been a, there's been an element of luck and grace and timing and, mm. and everything here. Uh, and, and I'll go at it this way too, mm. you know, taking, I, I would be, taking into consideration that the the luck and grace and timing and this thing happened at that time at that place. And it's just, it's not, you should be very weary when taking that into consideration, very weary of taking advice from people, Mm. Uh, anyone, even people who have what you want, Mm. you know, it's uh, because it's, it's very rarely repeatable. Mm. Interesting. So it's, it's really hard for me to say, Tim, if you that's a, me. that's a lesson in itself right there. That's a lesson in itself, right? The, maybe don't compare yourself too much to other people's journeys because <laughs> things, ebb it'll and never flow. happen. It'll never happen the exact same way. It's yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, and one of my takeaways based on what you just said too, is like, you got to stay in the game long enough for that luck and grace and opportunity to come your way. Right. Yeah. If you yeah, jump yeah. in for a couple months and quit, you're not probably not going to find mm-hmm. find those things, right? Yeah, and I mean, generally though, I uh, establish a foundation. Uh, 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 so you know, do some reading and learning, and um, and then there comes a point in time where where you switch from being a voracious reader to a voracious doer, and and a little bit less of a reader. I'm, def- I'm like I'm I'm in that phase right now. I you know I hit on that earlier a little bit. Um, you know, but it's going to be different for everyone. All, all I can say is, uh, mm. if you haven't been reading your whole life, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, but I think, I, I think people that, I think people that listen to a podcast like this, the majority of people, I think that they, I'm preaching to the choir here with that. Right. Right. get that. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they're out there, you know, at, well, they're, if they're here, they're educating themselves. Right. So they're yeah, doing yeah, something. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Already doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys and girls out there killing it's, it. It's not a sexy <laughs> answer though. Like, right. like, oh, keep, keep listening to Tim's podcast or Jordan's podcast or other podcasts and reading books. Well, I, I'm not going to find the answer tomorrow. I mean, I mean, yeah, you're probably not. It's 
it's tough, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> but, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a journey of ups and downs, brother. Um, man. So I've had some moments on my podcast where I've had some, you know, very cool guests, uh, share some things that kind of blew me away. Do you have any like guest or any moment with a, an interviewee that, that kind of really stuck with you? I'm sure you've had a lot, but is there anyone that stands out? You said this interview with this person really, you know, it, it really, it really taught me this pretty cool lesson that stuck with me, you know, even to this day. Yeah. I'll say when I was talking with Robert Green, author of 48 Laws of Power, The Laws of Human Nature, and, you know, the books and uh, one of my favorite authors. And we were talking about, and I had read this in The Laws of Human Nature. Maybe it didn't stick with me a ton. Mm. Um, and I'd actually heard him talk about this in other podcasts. I did read it in the book and it wasn't really like super, I don't know. It didn't like grab me. I mean, I mm. definitely remembered it, but uh, deciphering the shadow, deciphering people's shadow mm. with with contradictory behavior. And, and let me explain. He used the example, not me, of social justice warriors. Hmm. Be familiar? Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so social justice warriors, the, the virtue signalers who like to get social media points by, you know, posting something virtuous uh, and, you know, and preaching for, you know, for justice, for, for people when, while not really like understanding the nuance of the problem and, uh, and, and, and they, they essentially solve hate with, with, they think the answer to hatred in the world is by spewing more hatred mm, yeah. at those people. Like, I, I, I they, understand they, now. I understand. <laughs> but it's, a, but it's a, sh they have a show of virtuousness on the, on the outside, this, this morally superior opinion that they hold They're They're always, they're always on the right side of things. Always very virtuous, always, always in the right. Um, but really under that show of virtue is that, I mean, they're seething with hatred and pent up aggression. A lot of these people, most of them, almost all of these people are and these are destructive activists they will destroy you they will ruin your life if you go if you have any opinion that is not their morally superior opinion mm -hmm. they will destroy your life and a, a lot of so so you can look to a lot of the times under the emphatic trait rest the opposite another example someone someone i know who you know, he's always like, uh, his, his go-to when he feels threatened is, I'll beat the shit out of you. And <laughs> everyone, everyone knows, this guy, everyone knows, he is so incredibly insecure. Under that show of aggression is incredible insecurity. So oh, you can look to, like I said, look to these uh, mm. emphatic traits, overly emphatic traits. Mm. And a lot of the time you'll, if you dig deep and plumb the depths of their character, you'll find the opposite in there. So that always sticks with me. I think about it every day. Um, I use it as an example for a lot of things. And yeah. 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 It, it's almost for some self-awareness too. You could even go on yourself and say, why did I do exactly. that? You yes, know, what yes, was yes. the, what was the real core mm -hmm. of, of why I did that? You know, what was the yeah. shadow, right? Is that, is that what you kind of call it? What yeah. was the shadow? Yeah. Deciphering the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so powerful. And, and you know, you see that on both sides of, of the world today, especially in the whole, you know, left, right extremist category, right. which is, <laughs> and I just actually read this in Brene Brown's book, Braving the Wilderness. And she said, when the world presents you with two options, be very weary because both those options are probably wrong. Ah, I and like it. Probably other options because I like that, it. that is the world we live in. And I would definitely recommend this book, dude. It's, it was insane. Um, but she was just like, look, the reality is that people are nowadays identifying with their beliefs a lot or what they perceive to believe as the truth. And if you don't believe their truth, yes. then, then we can't be friends. We can't yes. belong. One of the reality is we are in our beliefs. We are in our yeah. thoughts. We are humans. Uh -huh. And this uh -huh. conflict is actually creating what she said, 
what we thought was it was going to create a more connected world because I was going to hang out with my people. Maybe me and Jordan are entrepreneurs and we do this and we do that and we believe this. And so we're going to hang out and we're going to feel super connected. And these people are going to feel super connected. But the reality is all of our beliefs are nuanced. And so when we start to just hate opposite beliefs, we start to feel extremely lonely and isolated and that anger can, can fester even more. Mm -hmm. And then we start spewing out more and it's this cycle of just what's happening in the world. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Tim. I mean, it's all, it, I think at the po it's at the point right now, it's, I'm not saying it's not going to get better, it probably will, it's just, you know, it's an election year and whatnot. I don't think uh, a, a liberal and a conservative, like, I think it's harder, it's hard to like date, you know, if, if, oh, yeah. if one's a liberal and one's, I think it's, I think it's almost nearly impossible. Haven't tried it, but I would imagine that's, I mean, how do you avoid that, that conversation? You know, it's, it's just, it could get very sticky. Yeah. You got to be able to, I mean, my takeaway from the book too, which I think the world needs to hear this is you got to be able to be vulnerable enough to sit in those conversations, coming with the intention saying, Hey, just, you know, I, whatever. So let's say we have me and you have complete opposite beliefs. And I say, Jordan, my intention with this conversation is I want to learn more about what you believe. I want you to learn more about what I believe. And I want to see if we can come to some level of just, just human, just humanize the conversation, lead with that intention, let it be known and then have a conversation and be willing to sit in something. Even if you're like, I don't agree with that, but sit with it and be like, okay, tell me more. Why, why do you, you know, just, and just be in that space because that's what we're not doing. We're not allowing people to have the space for those conversations. And I think that if we don't do that, then we're, we're not going to be able to see a lot of change, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, my, I, I that's mean, my take on it. I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard when, when both sides think they've seen the light and <laughs> yeah, right. thinks the other side is an idiot. <laughs> right, right. It does it's, not, hard, man. <laughs> it's a tough puzzle piece to put together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Well, all right. I got, I got kind of a couple closing questions here. Um, so the podcast is called Dreamology. And I, I kind of thought of that name because, and it's actually, I'm growing more self-awareness around it as I continue to go on my journey. But, you know, I grew up kind of with the traditional American dream, right? A lot of, a lot of our generation did, which was, you know, we had good house, we had these good things, but we're seeing that there's a lot more to this. And so for dreamology, I wanted to say, I want the study aspect. I want to be studying what is the modern day American dream? What does that look like? You know, for Gen Z and this new generation, like there's more to it than just, you know, having these basic things, you know, there's gotta be something more here because a lot of people are struggling, right? A lot of people are suffering. And so I'm going to read to you. I decided to go to Google and I decided to Google what the definition of the American dream was. Oh, good. I'll, I'm excited for this. I'm curious. So I'll read it to you and then I'll kind of ask the question that I have for you. But basically what it says is the American dream is the belief that anyone, regardless of where they were born or what class they were born into, can attain their own version of success. Yeah, I like it. I like that. I really liked that definition. I really did. And I know you kind of touched on it. people have this. twisted it, though. It's been twisted. Exactly. My question for you is based off that last part because I'm curious, Jordan, what your version of success, at least right now in sure. your early life, looks like. And what does that Freedom. look like? Freedom. Freedom. The ability to live anywhere, anytime, do anything. Yeah, that's it for you. That's it. I love it, man. Cool. Well, I'm curious if you have any closing message or based on everything we talked about, you know, listeners out there, young Gen Z, uh, any closing message or call to action for them you'd like to kind of leave with the audience? Uh, yeah. I'd like to give you the floor to kind of say your yeah. parting words, brother. Yeah, usually, usually I say I don't have anything here, um, but, but, you know, we're banking off the American dream uh yeah and how it's been how it's been twisted yeah don't I, I think it's been twisted to think like i mean my grandfather just doesn't understand that i can be making money and not work for a corporation like that it just, those two like if making money half then have to work at corporation like that's mm -hmm. the simple like if then statement that, that he understands he doesn't understand anything else and, and I think that a lot of people in society imposes uh, in some way that kind of American dream on a lot of people. Right. And, uh, and they just kind of go with it and realize 20 years later that, uh, oh, shit, like, I, I mean, this is a, I really wish I was doing something else. <laughs> yeah. I, really, I really didn't. I wish I thought for myself a lot. I mean, there's a lot of people out there. Hmm. I know them. 
And um, hmm. so go with your own flow. Don't go with uh, society's flow. I love that, dude. Yeah. Well, it's, it's almost right. It's just to, just to add one final closing comment. It's like we're handed the American dream as like, this is what it looks like. This is what it is. Here, take it. Yeah. And in reality, in the actual definition, it says your own version of success. Yeah. Your own yeah. flow, right? Like you said, go with your own flow. Don't go with the flow. And so I love that, man. I yeah. think you're spot on, brother. Yeah. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. I mean, just know that you're, if you jump off the conveyor belt, there's not going to be a, a, a plasma ray that vaporizes you when, <laughs> if you run off the conveyor belt. Just jump off the conveyor belt and don't look back. Hey, I've been watching some Marvel movies, so I can see, you know, the Avengers <laughs> hitting the... <laughs> hey, dude, I really appreciate the time, man. This was awesome. It was good to, to hang out for an hour, and I'm super grateful. Anytime anybody gives me... Mm an hour of their day and wants to hang out with me and talk about life, man. So I'm super grateful. And I just seriously wish you all the best, man, in your journey, yeah. brother. Tim, looking forward to hanging out with you in the future. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Jordan Paris. You know, he is my age and he is in the demographic that a lot of us are in, which is we're early, we're young, we're ambitious, we're trying things, and I hope that you learned a little bit from his story and the early stage successes that he has found. As he said, you know, in regards to the American dream, we are sold a picture of what it looks like, right? We are sold that the American dream looks like this, when in reality, in the definition, it says define success for yourself, and how Jordan says it is go with your own flow. And so that's my closing message for you to remember as you continue your journey. And as always, take out a piece of paper, go on the notes in your phone and write down the biggest takeaway that you had from this episode, the biggest thing you want to implement, the lesson, the quote, whatever it might be, and share it with me via social media DMs, your stories. I always love seeing what people are getting out of these episodes and how I can continue to improve and be better for you in the future. So with all that being said, go out there, make your dream life a reality, and I will see you next time. Peace. Peace.